from God to bestow us with such an amazing blessing, we have to wait while our package or our blessing is in transit, you know? Just like when minister said, you know, two to three business days, that really stuck with me. And um, we, we're gonna talk about this man named Joseph. And it's, it's so crazy because today, while I was just reading it and studying it even more, I realized that it's the same type of test and things that Daniel went through. You know, um, pastor has been teaching on Daniel for the past five, six weeks. And here it is, we're talking about Joseph going through the exact, really the exact same thing. So let us all turn to Genesis chapter 40, verse number eight, and Minister Sekola, can I get you to turn to Genesis chapter 39, starting at verse 21? And I'm going to read Genesis chapter 37, starting at verse 6. And it says, and he said to them, listen now and hear. I pray you this dream that I have dreamed. We brothers were binding sheaves in the field. And behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood around about my sheaf and bowed down. His brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or are you going to have us as your subjects and, do and dominate us? And they hated him all the more for his dream and for what he said. But Joseph dreamed yet another dream and he told it to his brothers also. He said, see here, I have dreamed again. And behold, this time, not only 11 stars, but also the sun and the moon bowed down and did reverence to me. And he told it to his father as well as his brethren. But his father rebuked him and said to him, what is the meaning of this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down ourselves to the earth and do homage to you? Oh my gosh, this is going to be really, really good. I need y'all to hold on to that. Hold on to those two dreams. Those two dreams are basically saying the same thing, that God is about to elevate Joseph to a position that his mother, his father, and all his brothers are going to have to bow to him. They're going to have to humble themselves before him because of the position that God is going to put them in. Minister Sekola, did you get um, chapter 39, 21, and 23? I could barely hear you. Can you hear me now? It's a little bit, it's a little bit better. Okay, Genesis uh, 39, 21, it says the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison and he was made responsible for all that was done there. That's all the way to 23? Oh, uh, the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Hallelujah. So in that same chapter, um, some verses before, um, even in, ver in chapter 37, his brothers were so angry with him that they wanted to kill him. But one of his brothers was like, instead of kill him, let's, let's sell him. And he was sold into slavery and bought by this man named Potiphar. And Potiphar, God showed Joseph so much favor that even as a slave, even as a bond servant in Potiphar's house, God showed him so much favor and had him prosper in everything that he did that Potiphar grew to like Joseph. And Potiphar appointed Joseph over all of his servants. 
Hallelujah. So, so, so God has already showed him a dream that he's going to elevate him to a place that his family is going to have to humble themselves before him. And Joseph could have had the mindset that, oh, since I'm in Potiphar's house and I'm over all his servants, this must be where God wants me to be. This is my plateau right here. You know, yeah. this is where God wants me to stop at. This is where, um, this is where it's going to end. But no, God still has more in store for him. So he was over the servants, even though he was a servant. See, a lot of times in our situations, we might not think, you know, that we're good enough for certain things. And, you know, we might be like, well, since I'm not at his level or I'm not at her level, you know, God isn't really working in me, but God is still doing the work inside of us. You know, God, we ask God for such and such, and God has already been preparing it for us. God is waiting for us to get to this point. And even through all of this, Potiphar's wife is like, okay, Joseph, he, he looking real good now. You know, at first he was just a little servant, but now that my husband appoint, appointed him, you know, in such a high a high place, you know, he's looking good now, you know, and she started coming on to him. She started trying to make advances towards him. And he's like, mm -mm, no, because you, your husband appointed me in this position and I'm not going to turn, why would I turn around and basically stab him in the back trying to get with you, you know, that's wrong. And so she lies on him. And just like what Pastor said last Wednesday, it's so amazing how God can connect, God connects everything. I mean, when I was reading it and studying, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. But Pastor said last week, um, no deliverance from a faithful fight. You know, this isn't a, this isn't a fight that Joseph is in that's, you know, is just straight the enemy, you know, it's not just the enemy just straight coming. No, this is, this is God, you know, showing Joseph that, you know, you, you reach one level. Now I'm about to take you to another level, but you still about to feel some affliction. I'm about to, this is him getting in the gym again. You know, he was in the gym when he was, when he got sold by his brother, but now God is like, okay, now I'm trying to get you to another level. So let me get you back in the gym again. So the wife lies on him. He gets thrown in prison. And the, and the description that minister psychologist said, God was still giving him favor. God gave him so much favor that even as a prisoner, you know, as a prisoner, the warden set him over other prisoners as if he was a guard. <laughs> but he's still a prisoner. Like, this is, this is the favor of God. This is why I say that favor while in transit, because he's still not where God has called him to be. He's still not in the position that God said, I want to take you to. Now, we're about to get into the meat of it. We're about to get into the meat of it. So in chapter 40, Genesis 40, starting at verse 8, it says, and they said to him, we have dreamed dreams. There is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Oh, Hallelujah. no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell me your dreams, I pray you. See, he, he, he was already given the gift of dream interpretations. Already. But the, the people, because he's still in prison. And... He didn't say, oh, yeah, you know, I, I'm a good dream interpreter. You know, if you pay me such and such, I'll interpret, interpret it for you. No, he said, Isn't all interpret, don't all interpretations belong to God? Like, who, who is more wise than God that one man can say that he can interpret a dream without the knowledge and the power and the spirit of God? You know? Verse number nine says, and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, 
In my dream, I saw a vine before me, and on the vine were three branches, were three branches. When it was as though it budded, it, its blossoms burst forth and clustered of them brought forth ripe grapes almost all at once. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them in Pharaoh's cup. Then I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. And you will again put Pharaoh's cup into his hand as when you were his butler. But think of me when it shall be well with you and show kindness, I beg of you, to me and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. Hallelujah. Verse 15, for I true, for truly I was carried away from the land of Hebrews by unlawful force. And here too, I have done nothing for which they should put me into the dungeon. So even in the position that he has in the prison, he recognizes and understands that this isn't where God has, has called me to be. This, this isn't it, you know? And he's asking this man, you know, in three days, I'm, I'm already knowing that you're gonna be out in three days. So in those three days, could you please let, let Pharaoh know that, you know, I'm here unjustly, I'm here unlawfully. And that goes back to no deliverance from a fateful fight. When your fight is faithful, you're not going to be delivered from it because God is putting you in the gym. You're in the gym right now. You know, you're, you're, you're growing in strength. You're growing because God is like, okay, because the position that I'm going to put you in, you know, I don't need you to only be able to lift 135. The position I'm trying to put you in, you got to be able to lift 235, you know, 250. I need you to be able to carry on more than what, what you're able to do right now. So right now I'm, 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 I'm taking you through the fire. I'm, I'm, I'm pruning you. I'm, I'm strengthening you. Amen. So, so, so then in the next part of the scriptures, he's, he tells the, the baker his um, interpretation of the dream. But the difference between the butler and the baker is that the baker is going to die. You know, he, he has to give this interpretation to the baker like, man, I'm sorry to tell you, but man, in three days, Pharaoh's going to, going to slay you, man. And, 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 and not only is he going to slay you, but he's going to behead you and you won't even be buried. The birds are going to eat you. You know, you're going to be hung, beheaded, and the birds are going to eat you. And, and um, Pastor, can I get you to read verse number 23, Genesis chapter 40, verse number 23. Hallelujah. Did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so God has been doing all these things in Joseph's life. You know, um, he was sold into slavery, and then he, he, he received favor from his slave owner, was put over the house, then he was lied on, got thrown in prison, was put over all the prisoners as if he was a guard, interprets a dream. He's still doing God's work. You know, are you still doing God's work even in your, even while your blessing is being delivered? Are yeah. you still walking faithful with God even while you're waiting on God? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says to wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. You will mount up as wings as eagles. You shall run and not get weary. You shall walk and never faint. You know, God, God is like, are you still doing my work? Are you still walking faithful to me even 
in these t um, times of trials and torment and torture, whatever you're going through, are you still doing my work? Are you still worshiping me? Are you still praying to me? You know, are you growing even closer to me? You know, Joseph was still loving God when the sky was nice, sunny, and blue. And even when he was in the eye of the hurricane, you know, he was still doing what God had called him to do. And Joseph was 17 when he got sold. He was 17 when he had the dream, when he had the dream that he would be in such a high position that even his family members would have to bow and humble themselves before him, even though he was just a lowly Hebrew boy. You know, he was in um, Potiphar's house and over everything in Potiphar's house as if he was Potiphar's son, but yet he was still a servant. Genesis chapter 41. Um, Bosco, can I get you to read that? Genesis, Genesis chapter 41, verse number one. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah, Genesis. Genesis 41. Yes, Genesis 41, verse number one. Yes, sir. When two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the... Uh, no. Now, it, it's, it's on you? Okay. Uh, when out of the uh, river, uh, there came up seven cows, fleece and fat, and they grazed among the reef. The re After them, just, ten other cows, early and gone. Oh, you hear me, Bosco? Just me. read verse one. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When two uh, full please. years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing by the Nile. Hallelujah. So, so after Joseph, after those three days, it was Pharaoh's birthday, and he released the, the butler and the baker. The baker died, but the butler regained his honor and he was able to get back to where he was at first as the butler to the um, Pharaoh. And he forgot all about Joseph. He forgot what Joseph had did for him. And, and, and what Joseph had told him came to pass. And so here we are two years later, two years later, now the king has a dream. And, and it's so crazy because the scriptures after that, after he describes his dream in the scriptures, he wakes up and he's troubled. And guess who he calls? He doesn't call Joseph. He does the same thing that King Nebuchadnezzar did. He called his magicians and his sorcerers to try to interpret his dream. And then the butler realizes, he say, hold on, wait a minute. King, the king is having a dream. Pharaoh has a dream that nobody can interpret. But two years ago, there was this man that was in prison with us that told me this dream. And he's talking to Pharaoh. He's like a, a man by the name of, what's his name? What's his name? Joseph. He's in prison. He interpreted my dreams, my dream that I dreamed twice because the king dreamed the same dream twice. And just like the butler and the baker had the same dream twice, even Joseph had the same dream twice, you know, and he interpret their dreams. And so he tells the Pharaoh about um, Joseph. And in verse, in chapter 41, he brings Joseph out and he tells Joseph the dream and Joseph interprets it. And Joseph tells him, Pharaoh, you're about to have a kingdom that's about to be like flourishing for the next seven years. For the next seven years, you're going to be flourishing. You know, we're going to, you're going to be bringing forth so much crop and all it is. And then he said, but the seven years after that, man, it's going to be a famine. The land is going to be bare. It's going to be dry. It's going to bring forth no fruit, no vegetation. And so they devised a plan to store it away. And 
while they store it away, um, it comes to pass. And the Pharaoh, Pharaoh is like, man, this man, Joseph, everything he said is happening, you know? And he's like, there is no man wiser than you. You know, what man can, can, can y'all bring that is wiser than this man? You know, who can you bring that is wiser than him? And in verse 40, chapter 41, verse 40, he said, you shall charge over my house and all my people shall be governed according to your word with reverence, submission, and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you. So here we go, just like Daniel was elevated in Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, in the kingdom with Nebuchadnezzar, here we go seeing Joseph in the same position. You know, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his signet ring. That's that signet ring. That's like a stamp, you know, just like the signet ring that closed the uh, the lion's den on Daniel is this is a signet ring that Joseph is um, being bestowed upon. Ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in an official vestment of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, "I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand." our feet in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph the name Zephanath, Pina, and he gave him Asenath, Asenath, daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, and to be his wife. And Joseph made an inspection tour of all the land of Egypt. And Joseph had two children, and he named his first, one of his son, Manasseh, which means for, forget, because he forgot all the, the, the torment, all the trials that he had to go through. And he named his other son Ephraim, meaning fruitful, because God made him fruitful in the land that, gave, that brought him so much torment. And then in verse 42, his father Jacob realize that Egypt has has grain and he sends his sons out to to fetch it and if you continue to read the scripture you see that his sons come to Joseph who is the governor over all the land of Egypt there is no man higher than Joseph except the Pharaoh and his brothers don't even recognize him hallelujah hallelujah so there's going to be some things that God is going to send you through. There's going to be some people that, that, that be like, you are nothing. You, oh, you, you waiting on God for what? You know, you, you waiting on him. Why? You know, and God is going to bring you to a place that when, when, when the land is in need, when they're in need of a job, when they're in need of something, they not even going to recognize you because of the position and the authority that God is going to bestow upon you. God is going to put you in such a high position that your family members won't even recognize you. They've known you, they've known you all your life. But God is going to, God is going to make them not even recognize you. They're not even going to know who you are anymore. They're going to bow to you. They bowed to him and not even knowing who he was. Right. And he told them in a dream. And they got mad, jealous, and envious talking about, shall we be, you know, your, your, your bond servant? Shall we, you know, shall you be um, dominant over us? You know? And, and, and it's like Joseph started to tease his brothers because he, he recognized them. When they, when they stepped foot, um, foot in Egypt inside the palace where he um, stored all the grains and stuff, you know, he recognized them. They looking at this man in his eyes and they don't even know who he is. They done forgot how he looked. Um, you know, he's decked out. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was decked out in all the finest jewelries and whatnot. And they still didn't recognize him because they, 
they they couldn't see him. They couldn't see him in his glory, in 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 the in the capacity that that God has elevated him to. You know, see, Joseph could have been could have been settled at Potiphar's house. You know, he would have been good at Potiphar's house, but he understood. Nah, this isn't where God has me. You know, this my brothers hasn't come. My brothers haven't come and bowed before me. My father hasn't come and my mother hasn't come and bowed before me. You know, I, I'm not, I, no, this isn't where God has, has wants me to be. God wants me even higher. You know, he was in prison as if he was the warden. He was like, nah, this isn't it. I need to get up out of here. You know, he's telling the butler, remember me, you know, get me out of here. Cause this isn't where I'm supposed to be. This isn't where God has called me to be. God wants me to be an even higher. You know, he's called, Pharaoh has set this man as governor. No one can go into that storehouse except they have permission from Joseph. And when his brothers came, he told, he asked them straight up. He said, is this all of your brothers? They say, no, we have a younger brother back at home, you know? And we have another, we have two more brothers back at home. He say, go get them. Go get them. They still don't even recognize him. He takes their bags and he fills it with money. God is going to put you in a position where those that persecuted you, those that, that tried to belittle you, those that tried to, to, to shun you, beat you down, God is going to bring you to a place in him, in God. That yeah. you're like, you know, I know you did this to me. I know you did that to me. But my God is a forgiving God. And who am I not to forgive you? You know what? Even though you don't deserve this, I'm going to fill you with the things that you don't even really deserve. You know, because God is, God is a forgiving God. God, the spirit of God was so deep and on the inside of Joseph that that when Joseph went to the storehouse and told them to fill the bags he wept he cried because he's like my brothers are struggling my father is struggling they don't have any food they they don't have anything you know and and he 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 seen he he already knew i'm pretty sure he's like man all the things that I had to go through to get to here. And he wept because he's like, man, I serve a mighty God. I serve a God that can, that can turn a, a, a circumstance into whatever he wanted to be. You know, his, his promise was delayed 13 years. He was 30 years old. <laughs> he was 30 years old for 13 years. He's been, been in prison and, in and out of prison, he's been been through all of this. And yet we can't even, excuse me, yet we can't even wait on God in certain situations. We ask God to bless us and we want it now, you know? But what about those times when, when we first heard the word of God, we didn't submit to God immediately. You know, it took time for us, you know? And some of us still not even submitting to God. And we know the word. We were bred in the word. We were raised in the word. And we still refuse to come to God. And yet when God, when we ask God for a blessing, we want to tell God, I need it now. I can't pay my rent. I need you to give me money right now. You know, we don't even trust in God. We look at God as if he's Santa. You know, every day is December 25th. Every day is Christmas. So God, today, Christmas, give me what you owe me, you know? And, and Joseph, he had the mentality of, this isn't it. Mm -mm. God, God still has more for me, you know? And yet and still, he's still doing the work of God. He's still using his gift that God gave him to glorify God and not himself. He didn't ask the um, butler and them for money. All he asks is just tell the Pharaoh that I don't even belong here. You know, I, I've committed no wrong. You know, just like Pastor said, it, 
it's a fateful fight. We can't be, we're not going to be delivered from it. It's, it's something that's going to grow our faith. You know, this, this is God bringing us to the next level. You know, this isn't the enemy trying to bring us down the level. No, God is trying to bring us to another level. God is trying to elevate us, you know, and Joseph, he, he, he realized that Joseph wanted that so bad that even God is so amazing. Two years, two years had passed by and yet Joseph, he was still the man in the prison. He was still all, all, over all the prisoners. I'm pretty sure he was interpreting more and more dreams still doing the he's still about the kingdom business and yet and still he still had to wait and and we we hear about christians that 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 don't want to wait on god so they turn from god but the word of god says that it is impossible to hear and to dine and sup sup on the things of god to you know uh, taste the sweetness of god and then turn from god no, you, you can't do that. Uh, you know, God is saying it's, it's not even possible for us to do that, you know? And, and Joseph was the governor. He, he got to the place where God called him to be, which is being the governor. He was second underneath Pharaoh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he was, in he was in prison, in and out of prison for 13 years. Took 13 years for his father and his mother and all his brothers to come back and have to bow to him. And then they realized, oh my God, you know, like what Joseph was telling us, you know, they didn't even recognize him. God says, I'm gonna bring you to a level where your enemies don't even recognize you. The people that persecuted you, the people that, that mocked you, the people that talked down on you, didn't even recognize, don't even recognize you. I remember a story that Pastor talked about. Um, I, I, I believe it was a Facebook story or something that he was talking about. And he was talking about a man that didn't have a lot of money in his wallet and whatnot and his 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 girlfriend or wife left him because he because he wasn't you know a wealthy man or he was a forgetful man or something and then years later they come the the man that she's with you know they come up to um his house and she answers the door the husband goes back because he forgot something in the car and she's at the door and her ex answers the door and it's a nice house. He answers the door and she don't even recognize him. Well, she recognized him and she's talking about, oh, you must be a servant in this house too or whatnot. Oh, you, you couldn't get, you couldn't get any money. So you over here serving somebody else, this, that, and that. And she's talking down on them. And then the husband come back and he say, oh, you, you know my boss? You know, and she's just not talking bad on this man. And this is the man that, that he wanted to introduce her to, not even knowing that she left him because he was a nobody. You know, God elevated Joseph. God wants to elevate you. You know, the, the, the things that you've been praying for, the, the, the commitment that you want God to have, God is like, okay, your, your package is in transit, you know? But we can't go on Amazon or anything and find out what a package is. We can't, we can't see where it's at right now. You know, we have to trust in God. We have to be patient. We have to walk with God, continue to walk with God. We have to continue to do the things of God, do the, the, the things that God calls us to do. You know, God is still elevating you. He is still bringing you to the place to where when that blessing does come, God is like, okay, 
I could take you to the next level now. You know, I pray that what y'all receive today cause a stirring in your spirit because ever since Sunday, when I heard Minister Sokola talk about the rat that was in his house and he had to pray and he said, you know, two to five business days is going to be out of your house, you know, and when mom said that delay doesn't mean denial, that has been like burning in my spirit. And, and I've just been asking God, you know, God, what it is you have me, I, what, what do I need to be doing in my moment while, while the blessing is in transit? What do I need to be doing? What is it that you want me to be doing right now? You know, while I'm supposed, while I'm waiting on the blessing that you have for me, you know, that's what I've been praying and asking God. I've been seeking God th for the past four days or whenever Sunday, Sunday, since Sunday, you know, even when I was driving back out here to Arkansas, that's what's been on my spirit, you know, God, what it is I'm supposed to be doing, you know, what, what shall I be doing? What am I supposed to be doing to advance the kingdom of God? I'm not even worried about the blessing. I'm worried about advancing the kingdom of God. And I pray that this cause of stirring in your spirit and do not stop. Do not get weary. Continue to wait on God, you know, because God has waited on us for so long. There are still things that I haven't given to God. There are still things that I'm still holding on that even though I'm still holding on to these things, God is still blessing me. I'm able to pay my rent on time. You know, I remember a time where, shoot, I'm over here asking for money. I can't even pay rent, you know? And now God has blessed me in a position where I rent, okay, that's easy. I'm able to pay rent and put money on the side. I'm able to pay rent, put money on the side, and invest money, you know? And, and God is just gonna continue to bless you. And that's why I said favor while in transit, because while you're waiting on that blessing, God wants to bestow his favor upon you, you know? And whatever you're waiting on, you're waiting on that job, God is bestowing favor upon you that you're still able to pay, able to pay your bills. And you're like, wow, God, I don't even have a job and I'm still able to pay my bills, you know? And I pray, I pray that God, that this message has blessed y'all as much as it did me. And dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to, to come before your people, Lord God, and to minister your word, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that, that what you wanted me to present to them, Lord God, I present it to them in such a way, Lord God, that it's pleasing unto you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for allowing these people to have an ear to hear and eyes to see, Lord God. I thank, thank you, Lord God, for you know, just giving me the 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 fact the passion and the and the ability, Lord God, to minister your word and to minister your word with the passion, Lord God that you have given me, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I pray that the passion that I have for you doesn't run out, Lord God. I pray that the fire that I have burning for you, Lord God, it doesn't diminish, Lord God. And even, Lord God, that what, even when we're in the storm, Lord God, I pray that you allow us to be stayed on you, Lord God. Help our eyes to be stayed on you, Lord God. Help, help our faith, Lord God, to grow even stronger, Lord God. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.